My name is uh, Sergeant Gustavo Lennon, and I was previously stationed in Okinawa, Japan. So uh, I volunteered um, because that's the type of person I am. Um, I'm a go-getter. I'll go and get it. I'll never settle for less. I'll never be stagnant at where I'm at. I'll never be comfortable with where I'm at. I always want to progress, and the more I progress, I feel like the more of an asset I'll be to the organization. Okay, so I'm Staff Sergeant Casey Robin Goff. Casey Goff. Um, came from Okinawa, actually. I'm a single mom, so I had to uproot everything for a permanent move. Combat engineer, 1371, and I've been in almost 11 years. That's going to be your first line of network. So get familiar with each other while you're here. Learn from each other. If you have knowledge, pass it on. Don't hold it on and be successful as a team. Do we understand that? Yes, yes sir. sir! Nothing else. Always give 100% of yourself at all times. Because I see we have a, a big class, and hopefully all you make it. I want all of you to make it. Name is Sergeant Thompson. Um, first name is DeAndre. Middle initial Lloyd. Um, that's from my uncle that passed away a long time ago. But carry on that tradition. Um, from 26 Mu, um, we just got back from our deployment um, this past August. Bring you back to the basics of what you should have been taught when you were a recruit. Things you should have been holding yourself accountable for as a Marine, as a staff NCO, and an NCO. It's a premier leadership school here on the depot, and I think it's one of the premier leadership schools across the Marine Corps. I am first on ward. Um, the DI school first on here at Paris Island. And what I do here is provide mentorship and leadership for my instructors, um, advise the director, Lieutenant Colonel Kopke, and also provide leadership for the Marines that are trying to become drone soldiers here on Paris Island. Yes, sir. But you gotta be loud when you're doing the parade because they can't hear you. Because one thing about it, they don't have all this stuff. So it's almost the same transformation you see on a day-to-day -day basis with any Marine going to any challenge in school. When they get here, they're raw material. They're um, a fleet marine, which is not a bad thing, but they have some skills that they kind of lost touch with. It's gonna be enough, I know it'll be enough, because this is, this is why I'm here, and I'm gonna put everything into this, my heart, my soul. You know, I'll be hungry, I'll be tired, but it can never be good enough. That's why I'm here, and that's why I wanna do this. Those recruits see you 24-7 and you're the first eye of a Marine that they get to see besides the recruiter of oh, this is what I need to be like. Told by my one of my drill instructors that I would never give my time back here at Paris Island so this is my time back here at Paris Island where he is. Anything worth having is a challenge and I can promise you now you will be challenged every single day. It has no count. If you're listening, it's not easy. I'll tell you that right now. In my opinion, it's Marine Corps above everything else. Marines don't uh, go out and jump on hand grenades for God and country. They do it for Marines. So that, to me, that's what drone starters represent. You know, they represent all that is good with the Marine Corps. When they're standing on a parade deck at a, at a graduation or you see them marching around. Uh, the way they carry themselves is professionalism. It's just sharp as a tack, looking good, sounding mean, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, 1952 is when Drill Instructor School, as we know it, stood up. It was a three week long course, but it was more intense. In 52, it was a depot school. 55, it became a Marine Corps school because the Marine Corps recognized hey, we need to have a little bit of a hand in the curriculum need to have a little bit more control over what's being done. Nothing, not, not that anything wrong was going on, it just made, it, made much more sense. I think it's cool. Um, but if you're in the Air Force, then I 
I'll contact you know, the Air Force people and say, hey, what do you, but like I said, it's going to get put in storage. Now, it, it may come out. Now, I don't know what their policy is. I can't speak for them. They, you may say, hey, I want this out. Being a drill instructor, going through school, like, I'm not stupid. It's, it's the hardest thing. But then on top of that, me being me, who's the most difficult person ever, um, I decided to have a kid first. You know, he'll come as often as we can get him down here, but yeah, it's, it's hard. I think the hardest part of being a parent is just the goodbyes, saying the goodbyes, you know, taking them, dropping them off so you can come back and train and you have no idea what to expect. When I'm talking to my kid, I try to just pry my eyes open and really stress that I love him and I'm gonna see him soon. As a drill instructor for me, my family understands why I want to do it, and it's because it's not because I was hissed. No, you volunteer for this. Like you want it. You have to be so thirsty for success that unless you're working for it, your mouth is dry. And it's the same way when I look at that cover. Like it gives me chills to be able to do that, no matter what. I just I want to be that. I want to do that. What you think they don't notice, they do. They really do. They they get it. They're humans, they get it. I know they're humans too. Um, it's not their job to fix every little problem and they won't do anything for you if they don't see effort, which I love about them. They're very demanding, they're meant to be demanding. But the fact that, uh, that they help you when you need it, like they, they'll really help you. You have a positive mindset and you want to work, you know, the, the challenge is to make someone succeed. And the Commandant said that, so I'm going to steal his words from him, but General Miller said the, the challenge is to make someone succeed. Most of the battle with being successful with drill is being a good leader and getting the recruits to want to win. So we, so we try to do that with the students here, the same thing is, is to let them know the same thing is it's important for those specific reasons and then on top of that, we give the students a foundation on all the drill movements they're, they're ever going to use uh, out as a drill instructor here. The fact that they're instructing me, they're teaching me, you know, they're correcting me, that's good. Like, I love that. I'm hungry for it. I want it. And it'll make me better, and it'll make me good enough to replace you one day. The instructor cared, and he just made sure I was okay, and I'm fine. But um, little things like that, I'm grateful that I can still talk to my family immediately. It's not like Afghanistan where, you know, there is a delay. Being a Marine and being a drill instructor is just as important as taking care of your family. So you, you um, and they all affect each other, you know. So you need, you need to put just as much effort into being a good Marine as you do into being a good father or mother or husband or whatever. Which is like narcotics or finish all medication, which is like antibiotic stuff, right? Yes. So you have to make sure they take all the pills or it's narcotics, you control it, make sure they take it so that way they're not dishing that stuff out, whatever the case may be, right? Yes. We want them to be able to think their way through something. We want them to exercise in this shit. We want them to be able to be leaders. And that those aren't the things we're teaching to a first phase recruit. As a sergeant, I want you to be able to figure out how are you going to execute the training schedule? How are you going to train 80 young men over the next 70 training days? That's a different mission than the recruit learning. The recruit is learning how to become a Marine. The student at DI school is learning how to be a better version of themselves as a leader. Like I told my roommate when I first got here, I, I, I kind of struggled with accepting the fact that I was here and I was going through it because I was constantly getting yelled at. Everybody's constantly getting yelled at. 
Um, just adjusting to the environment that we're in though, um, it was a little bit difficult at first, but I would do it all, absolutely, I would do it all over again um, because it's part of the process and everything that's done here is done for a reason and, and sometimes you still kind of question it, but at the end of the day, when everything is said and done and the smoke's cleared, you kind of get a realization of why they did that or why they wanted us to do it this way. So Sergeant Thompson, how was your nap? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smell before. I have a college degree and I decided not to commission because I wanted to be a drill instructor. So one of those things was the academic side of the teachbacks. And every time you hear about a drill instructor, you hear teachbacks, teachbacks, teachbacks. It's finally that time to do it. You're trying to scream at the top of your lungs so you could break your voice to build your voice up. You're showing up here as a non-commissioned officer, and our job is to make you better. You know, razor sharp creases and, and a campaign cover. You know, the thing that everybody envisions as a Marine Corps drill instructor, the perfect NCO and staff NCO. Coming down here and taking a challenge to become a drill instructor, and now the fact that we do things differently and we focus on the leadership aspect and the development of that NCO or staff NCO. The focus is on leadership. If they're willing to take that challenge and come down here and do that three-year job interview, the success that they're going to have and the way they're going to separate themselves from their peers is going to be almost exponential in nature. Sergeant Thompson, um, hold on, it's been a while, hold on, let me get my voice back first. <clears throat> Sergeant DeAndre Thompson, 0911, drill instructor. Uh, my name is uh, Sergeant Lennon, uh, first name Gustavo, um, and 0911, um, a drill instructor here on Paris Island. Uh, Casey Robin Goff, I'm a staff sergeant and I'm a drill instructor for the one and only Papa Company. It's, it's not an easy job. If it was, everybody be a drill instructor. Um, but I can't change who I am. I am who I am, and I think one of the best advice that previous drill instructors have given me and been going through DI school was never change yourself to become somebody you're not. So at the same time, I'm finding my way, but I'm not changing who I am as a person. Going through DI school, Prepare your voice, because it's, it's funny to say now, because I didn't realize it while I was in school that, so the louder that you are, the better that the recruits are able to hear you and know what to do. Drill Southern Sergeant Thompson was one of the people that I looked up to, and they remember me. So when I'm, I'm gone from this earth, that my legacy is still able to live on, but also the Marine Corps legacy as well. Say 10 years goes by and 
your son is sitting on the computer and he looks you up on, on Google or whatever <laughs> the search browser is. He sees you in this in this and like obviously he sees how awesome you are. What do you what do you hope he'll say? I hope he'll say, Yeah, I remember when my mom was a dual instructor. I remember watching her get her cover. And he'll probably forget me getting my cover. But what I really hope he'll say is, my mom's freaking awesome. Ten years from now, I hope if he remembers that I was away for this time, that he realizes why. That maybe one day he'll come to the museum and be like, oh my gosh, that's what my mom did. And he'll, he won't ever know the struggles of a drill instructor because we don't tell the world. We don't tell anybody about, the, it's gonna be hard. Um, so if my son sees this, I want him to know that it was the hardest thing I've ever done with my life. Aside from giving labor and freaking, or going into labor and, and giving birth, all that. Um, I just want him to know that like, I looked at the challenge, I looked at the challenge straight in the face and I stepped up to it.